If you have a Furion air conditioner on your RV and it's leaving you feeling hot and humid, maybe it's short cycling, you know, turning on and off constantly, maybe you're getting inaccurate temperature readings on your thermostat on the wall. Perhaps you've even read about folks that have relocated the temperature sensor on the air conditioner. If any of those apply to you, then this video is for you. Now, fair warning, this is going to be a longer video, and I confess there are parts of it that are kind of geeking out a little bit, getting a little bit nerdy. And so for those of you that have a, a shorter attention span, I mean, I didn't mean to say that. I mean, if you don't have the time to watch the entire video, I will include chapter markers down below so that you can skip around and watch the parts that are important to you. But I do encourage you to watch the full video because I think it will give you the fullest, most complete picture of the, the Furion AC system. I also wanna emphasize that this video is not to bash Furion. In fact, I think the design of their AC, it's one of the better ones, especially the way it's all sealed up inside in the, the plenum there. And so really this video is just to document my journey, my experience troubleshooting the way the air conditioner was working. Also to help out fellow owners if you're in the same boat and then perhaps even to provide feedback to Furion. Now for me, all of this started here on my 2024 Grand Design Travel Tour that I'm sitting in and it came equipped from the factory with a Furion air conditioner. This is actually my, I think my sixth RV. It's the first one I've ever owned that came with a Furion air conditioner. All the previous ones had, you know, Coleman Mach or Dometic ACs. So this is my first experience with a, a Furion AC. And recently when I was out camping, I noticed that the air conditioner was short cycling. It would turn on the compressor and fan and everything and start cooling. And then a minute or two later, it would turn off. And then a minute or two later it would turn back on. And so it was short cycling and it just wasn't feeling very comfortable. So what do you do? Of course, you go to Google, you start searching to see if other people have had the same problem. And sure enough, and I discovered that the temperature sensor that controls when the air conditioner you know, calls for cooling, when it turns on essentially, the temperature sensor is actually up in the plenum, up in the air conditioner in the ceiling as opposed to on the wall. And of course, naturally I was getting wildly inaccurate temperature readings because I wasn't running the fan continuously. And so online, when I researched on Google, I'm late to the game, by the way, this problem's been around for a while, but many commented and said, hey, I've relocated the temperature sensor from the plenum to the wall and that solved the problem for me. But there wasn't any data to back up that claim. And so I was reluctant to, you know, alter the factory air conditioner in a way that might void the warranty, right? And then it also begs the question, why would Furion design it that way with the temperature sensor up in the, the plenum, right? Of course, there's a lot of hate online about this particular issue. And for me, it's hard to digest that a, a large company like Furion, which is owned by Lippert now, that they would design it in an inferior way, right? And I would imagine that they have some very smart employees, smart engineers that designed their, their air conditioner. And so really I came to the consensus that I'm probably using the product perhaps differently than the way it was designed or, or tested, right? And so naturally I reached out to Furion Tech Support via email. I explained the problem that I was having with the AC short cycling and it just not feeling comfortable and dry. And so the Furion Tech explained to me that really the air conditioner was designed to have the fan running continuously all the time to help circulate that air. And that way the temperature sensor up there in the plenum gets an accurate uh, temperature reading. And of course that makes perfect sense to me as to why I wasn't getting accurate readings. The only problem is I live in the South. And so not only is it hot in the summer, but it's very humid. It's very, very humid. And really it's the humidity that's the problem, right? I mean, you wanna lower the temperature, but you also wanna remove that humidity to in turn make it feel cooler. And so without going into too much detail, this is a problem that I'm very familiar with in my house. I've troubleshooted it. And what I found is if I keep my fan on the entire time circulating air within the house, then the house accumulates humidity very rapidly and it makes it feel very uncomfortable as opposed to running the system on auto where the fan only comes on when the compressor turns on when it calls for cooling. So that's what I found. I've been down that path already. So to 
turn on the fan continuously in my RV, I already know that if I do that, yes, I'll get more accurate temperature readings because the sensor is up there in the plenum, but it's likely going to produce a lot more humidity and make it feel uncomfortable here in my RV. And so for me, I really struggled with Furion's recommendation to leave the fan running continuously all the time as opposed to just the, the auto mode, especially with my climate here in the south and the, the high humidity. But at the same time, I don't have any data to, to back this up. It's just my subjective experience, what I'm feeling, right? What feels comfortable. And so I thought, well, why not run an experiment and actually track temperature and humidity? And that way I have some data to back up what I'm feeling and see if it really is the case. And so if you're still with me after that long intro, that brings us to the purpose of today's video. I'm going to conduct an informal experiment, a three-part experiment where I change one variable and track the temperature and humidity over about 16 hours, over the course of an entire night. Now, full disclosure, I'm not a scientist. I am not an engineer, just an average RVer. And so I tried to control this experiment so that there's only one variable. I tried to do the best that I could, at least. You know, I couldn't control the outside weather, for instance. However, I did try to pick three nights where the weather was fairly consistent, not just at nighttime, but also throughout the day so that that wouldn't have you know, a big impact on the experiment itself. Second disclaimer, I ran the experiment overnight when the temperature's a little bit lower, but humidity often spikes, at least in my climate here. And I think that's a more challenging environment for an air conditioner to perform and, you know, remove humidity without turning the RV into a, a refrigerator, right? And so you'll see in the experiment that the temperature outside dropped to the point where eventually the air conditioner no longer needed to call for cooling. And I think that was because of the outside temperature being low enough that it had some impact on the, the overall experiment. But I still think the data in the end is noteworthy and helps you know give some insight into the, the different phases of the experiment. But back to the experiment, let me start by just describing the parameters for the three different phases. And again, my goal is just to change one variable for each of the, the phases. So the first phase, is going to be running the air conditioner as is with the temperature sensor up in the, the plenum and keeping the thermostat set to fan on, meaning that the fan is going to be running continuously 100% of the time for the experiment, just like Furion recommends doing, okay? So that's phase one. Phase number two is, again, keeping the temperature sensor in the factory location up there in the plenum, but this time, I set the thermostat to fan auto. And so the fan only turns on when it's calling for cool or when the compressor is running essentially. Otherwise the fan is off. So that's second phase. Then the third phase is going to be actually relocating that temperature sensor that's up there in the plenum, putting that temperature sensor on the wall at the thermostat instead, rerunning the experiment, keeping the fan set to auto again, right? and seeing how the system performs across those three different phases. And so I'll be tracking humidity, I'll be tracking temperature, it'll be for about a 16 hour stint overnight in each of those three phases. And so ultimately the question that I'm trying to answer in this experiment is which of those three phases will produce the desired results, right? Which phase will make it feel most comfortable with the right temperature, the right humidity, so that you feel comfortable ultimately in the RV. I want to see data. I want to see science to back up which of those settings it should be on. Should it be on fan on? Should it be on fan auto? Should the temperature sensor be relocated? I want to see data to back up which ultimately is the, the best option. And so that is the end goal of this experiment. I'll also interject some things to check before attempting to modify your AC and relocate the temp sensor because after all, you might've stumbled across this video because your AC is not working properly, you're not feeling comfortable, and it may not be the temperature sensor that is the culprit. And so I'll mention some of those things that you wanna check first before even attempting to relocate that temperature sensor. All right, so with that, let me jump to the first phase of the experiment, full transparency. All of this was recorded earlier. And like I said before, stick around to the end because I'll circle back and show you all the data together and make some, some observations 
Again, if you need to skip around, I'll put some chapter markers as well. Okay, so we're gonna get the first experiment underway here. I just wanted to show where the room sensor is up here in the plenum. You can see it's right here, this black wire labeled room sensor. And so I'll go ahead and put the cover back on there. And then I've got the, the Govi temperature sensor right next to the thermostat. And it's reading 80 degrees on the thermostat and we're reading 79.3 there on the Gobi, so pretty close, right about 50% humidity. But it is five o'clock, and so we're gonna go ahead and start the experiment. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on, and we're gonna run the fan on low speed for the first round here. And then I'm going to set the temperature to 65 degrees so we've got fan on low speed it's on the cool mode of course there and the temperature is set to 65 degrees so of course the the fan has already turned on as you can probably hear and then uh, shortly after the compressor will kick in i'll show you where i've got the vents pointed they're all pointed away from the plenum where it goes back into the return air there because i don't want that cold air that's coming out of the supplies going right back into the, the plenum. I want it circulating throughout the RV. So those are all pointed away throughout the unit. And basically we're just gonna let it run all night long. Nobody's gonna be in here. All the windows are shut, all the doors are shut. And uh, we'll come back in the morning and see how the results are looking. Well guys, it is nine o'clock in the morning on the next day here. And so overnight, it's been running in the fan mode on low, temperature set to 65 degrees, of course, in the, the cool mode. So we're gonna go ahead and stop this first phase of the experiment and turn everything off. But let's take a quick look at the, the data. I'll go through this in more detail later in the video after all three uh, phases are complete but I'm gonna go ahead and refresh to make sure we've got the latest data here from the Govi sensor. And then I just wanna point out a, really a few things here. So we're gonna to go to day and let's get a zoom here that kind of matches our experiment there. Let me go out just a little bit more, there we go. So you can kind of see there to start out at five o'clock yesterday when it was up at about almost 80 degrees and then it quickly dropped down of course as the air conditioner came on and then you can see where the the temperature fell so it's really interesting it looks like it mostly stayed right around 66 67 and then outside of course the weather eventually got a lot cooler toward the early morning hours and at some point it looks like the air conditioner actually quit turning on, the compressor quit turning on because it was cool enough outside. You can see right here. Uh, so yeah, look at the humidity. I think this really tells us uh, a clear picture of how often the compressor was cycling on. I mean, just look at all those ridges. And again, we'll talk more about that, but I'm gonna zoom in here because I wanna know, well, how long was the compressor coming on for each time? And basically when we see that sharp drop in humidity that's when the compressor is turning on it peaks compressor turns on it drops sharply and that's when the air conditioner is actually running there so i'm going to go to the top of the peak we can see 1948 and then drop down to the bottom of a peak look at that 1952 minutes two minutes basically the compressor would run and then it would shut off and that's basically what i observed while I was actually camping in the RV numerous times, I would, I would hear the compressor click on for a minute or two and then turn off, on and then off. And uh, you know, it really just doesn't have the chance to remove humidity when it's coming on for such a, a short amount of time. So we'll look at that again, but basically now I'm going to let the unit acclimate to the ambient you know, temperatures outside, it's supposed to be similar weather today compared to yesterday, so we probably will start out phase two, similar conditions today, but basically leaving everything all closed up, leaving the, you know, the windows shut, the thermostat turned off, and I'll come back again at five o'clock for the, the next phase. All right, so I'm just a few minutes late here. You can see it's 5.05, .05. and so today the only variable that I'm changing here is I'm going to, instead of keeping it on the fan low, I'm going to put it on fan 
auto. And so that way the fan will cycle on and off as the compressor cycles on and off. And the question I'm trying to answer is, you know, how does that affect temperature, humidity, basically the overall comfort in the RV, you know, putting it on auto fan mode versus the fan low, like I did yesterday. And so the temperature in the RV right now, you can see is 76. So it's a little bit cooler in here compared to yesterday's starting point, but the experiment is not a race to see how quickly it can cool down. It's over the long haul, over the course of the entire night. You know, what does the humidity and temperature look like here? So we'll go ahead and get the experiment going here. We're gonna turn it on again and go to cool, and this time fan speed A for auto. Then I'm going to set it to 65 again so that basically all the variables again are the same except for the auto on the fan for tonight's run. And just for those curious, it's only been running for a, a few minutes as you can see, but I got my little surface temperature infrared reader here. And so you can see on the Govi temperature sensor, right at about 75 degrees, the thermostat you can see has already changed to 70. And that's because again, the the sensor is actually up there in the return plenum. In fact, if we shoot that, you can see it's already showing 67 degrees, right? And so what's happening is some of that cool air coming out of here is already getting sucked back into that, that plenum. But I also wanna show what the temperature is coming out of the supply here. Look at that, 48 degrees. And so I just wanna show that because there's nothing wrong with my air conditioner in terms of the you know compressor running and it bringing the temperature of the air down right i mean the air going in let's just say is about 70 you know 2 to 75 degrees right and then it's shooting out air that's you know under just under 50 degrees and and that's typical i mean most air conditioners should be able to lower the temperature from the return to the supply at least 15 if not 20 degrees or more and so I just want to reiterate that this air conditioner is working fine I mean it's basically brand new here but it's working fine it's lowering the temperature just fine what's coming out of the the supply vents of course when the compressor is running all right well let's carry on the experiment here and I'll check back again in the morning tomorrow Good morning, everybody. It's the next day, not quite nine o'clock. I'm a little bit early, I've got an appointment to run to. But just like last night, the call for air conditioning in the early morning hours uh, ceased because of the outside temperature. So it's not gonna make a difference here, even though I'm about 20 minutes early. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off here and we're gonna let all this kind of acclimate to the ambient temperature. But I did wanna show you real quick, just give you a preview of the data here and again i'll go over this in more depth later so we started out at a max temperature of 76 at five o'clock yesterday and then you can see the temperature dropped quickly and then it looks like about oh maybe two o'clock or so the air conditioning was no longer called for and so then it just kind of dropped and followed the outside temperature essentially but here's the one that's really interesting to me, and that's the humidity. Notice the humidity is significantly lower in last night's experiment compared to the night before. In fact, if I was to zoom out here just a little bit so you can see that better, I mean, we're talking 65% was the max yesterday with the fan running continuously. And then today we're looking at only about uh, 55 percent perhaps so, i mean 10 percent difference in humidity keeping the fan on auto and not having the fan running continuously so talk more about that later but i do think it does support the theory that if you leave your fan running it is going to reintroduce humidity into your your rv so for the next phase of the experiment today i'm going to relocate that temperature sensor that's in the plenum here and relocate it to the thermostat. And then we'll rerun the thermostat experiment again one more night 
keeping the fan in auto mode, but with the temperature sensor on the thermostat. Now, let me just interrupt and say that what I'm about to show you, the relocation of the temperature sensor, this is not an official how-to video. This is not endorsed by the manufacturer. I'm just letting you watch in as I relocate my temperature sensor. In fact, consider yourself warned because the manufacturer of Huron states that if you do this modification, you may void the warranty on your AC. So follow along at your own risk. Now, before doing the modification and relocating the temperature sensor to your thermostat or to your wall, there's a few things that, that I checked and I would encourage you to do the same thing because you may not necessarily need to relocate it depending on your unique situation. So I'm just gonna run through those things to check ahead of time. The first one is gonna be up here in the, the plenum. We wanna make sure that air is not excessively mixing between the return side where the air gets sucked in and basically it's sucked in up here, goes up into the, the coils and then it comes out the supply or the quick dump right here. I've got a ducted AC, so it's coming out of the, the vents there. But you wanna make sure that air is not mixing excessively. You know, there is a, a really nice foam wall right here. And I gotta say, out of all the air conditioners that I've owned from, you know, Dometic and Coleman, I really like the design of this Furion because they have this custom molded foam insert that really does a great job sealing up these these two sides and keeping the air separate and that's something that i don't see in some of the other brands and i think this helps ensure that regardless of what company what technician is installing the air conditioner that it's going to be more consistently sealed between those two sides so just make sure that this foam wall is intact that it's going all the way around you know up above you've got some more foam here to try to fill in that gap to keep air from mixing from the return side to the supply uh, you don't want that and then i also like that right here even between this outer shroud you can see going around this quick dump there's a foam gasket even going around that so make sure that, that foam gasket is there that it's not torn you know ripped or or folded in a way that uh, it's letting air mix because if air is mixing and coming out of this supply or between here and going straight back into re the return that could potentially throw off that uh, that room sensor there so double check and then also make sure just kind of go all the way around and see make sure that there's no other leakages because again your return air is getting sucked in on this side so if you've got a big hole right here in your you know that leads to your attic and it's sucking in that warm humid air that could also affect it. But I really like how this is Grand Design doing this here, how they filled this in with this nice sealant. So, I mean, there's no air getting in right there. And they've even got some uh, foil tape here around the outer perimeter, you know, sealing everything up nicely. And so when I look at this, it looks to be very well sealed and isolated. So I'm not getting air coming out of the supply that's going straight back into the return. I will say, that with this quick dump and it's not horrible but i have noticed you do feel just a little bit of cold air coming out of this quick dump and of course that's going to get sucked in from out here and go right back up into the the plenum so you know one thing you could do is take this shroud down by taking the the four screws out and you could permanently just tape this off if you wanted to for me it's a, a very small amount of air that i've noticed right there and so i'm gonna to relocate the sensor instead the last thing you want to check up here is that your room sensor is in the right position you can see mine is kind of out here in the open maybe you know it gets tucked in uh, to some of the wires right here and it's not really getting an accurate reading so make sure the room sensor is out here and that way it's getting an accurate reading and then make sure it's working so if we go over here to the, the thermostat you can see it's reading 72 degrees and then if i just squeeze it put my fingers around it let my body heat heat it up watch how quickly that it heats up there i mean just like that so we know that the sensor itself is indeed working it's just getting some in my opinion less accurate readings in the air plenum here compared to, to on the wall so check all those things first and then last thing i want to point out is on the the thermostat itself if you're going to relocate that air sensor uh, that temperature sensor you're going to have to run wires two wires to go between these leads here and the relocation of that temperature sensor so another consideration is 
did the manufacturer, in my case, Grand Design, did they run extra wires for you in the wires going between the airbox and the thermostat, or are you gonna have to run fresh wires? Because if you gotta run your own wires, that's one more obstacle. Thankfully, in my case, I don't know if Grand Design did this on purpose or they just happen to have this, this wire on hand, but this brown thicker wire right here, this jacket is what houses the wires running between this air box and my thermostat on the wall. And notice how they actually used a, let's see, a seven lead uh, wire. And so there's one, two, three different wires right here that are unused running between my air box and my thermostat. So what that means is I don't have to run any extra wires to relocate my thermostat. If you check this out here, if I pull the wires out a little bit, I've got that same bundle of wires and check this out. I've got three unused wires that I can tap into. So that's the good news. Thank you Grand Design for doing that. But that's something to, to check and uh, make sure because if you don't have extra wires, that's gonna be some extra work for you. And the last thing I'll just point out, this is kind of interesting. You see this right here. When I first took this off the wall and saw this, I thought, oh, maybe Furion designed a new thermostat here on the wall and there's a temperature sensor. This indeed is a temperature sensor, but it only works for the, the furnace. So I would imagine through software, they could probably program it to use this sensor for both the AC and heater, but unfortunately that is not the case. So those are just some considerations to think about before you do this modification. Check all those things because you may not need to do it in the end. So I'm about ready to hook everything back up and I just wanted to show close up what it looks like with the temperature sensor relocated. I opted to, to solder the wires right here. It would have been a lot easier to use some of these uh, Wago lever nuts, but because of the size of the hole and I didn't want to you know, risk getting it in there then not be able to pull the wires back out. Sometimes that happens with uh, the lever nuts given their size. So I went ahead and just soldered this. And then I noticed some very small nicks in two of these wires here existing. And so I went ahead and just put some shrink rack up over the, that spot just to make sure that I don't have any issues in the future. And then here's how everything turned out in the plenum box. So you can see these two new Wago lever nuts. Those are where I tapped into the existing sensor using those two leads, the yellow and the green. And that's what goes back over to the wall here. All right, so I've gotten everything all buttoned up and I'm gonna let the, the sensor kind of acclimate because I was touching it, but you can see I just left it sticking out of the existing slot that's on the bottom of the, the thermostat. So you got the one sensor for the furnace and now a second one for the air conditioner. So I'm gonna let this sit, acclimate, and I'm just curious to see after you know an hour or so of being undisturbed, how accurate is the reading? now that I you know, added all that extra wire into it. All right, so I'm running a little bit late this evening. It is 5.08. I'm going to go ahead and get the third and final phase of the experiment going. Earlier today, I relocated the sensor, the temperature sensor from the plenum over here to the thermostat. You can see it's sticking down over here. And so for this third and final phase, the temperature sensor has been relocated. I'm going to put it in the auto mode and see how it performs overnight. I am noticing that it's reading 82 degrees on the thermostat through that sensor right there. And if we go to the Govi temperature sensor here, you can see, look at that, it's reading 77.4, which is quite a bit lower. So let's just check the surface temperature with this infrared reader and see 
Okay, so I am getting about 80, 81. There, there's probably a little bit of heat coming from that thermostat. So it might not be too far off. You know, I was a little concerned by stretching the, the wire between the sensor, making it longer that that would throw off the resistance, but maybe there is some heat coming off of that thermostat perhaps. So we'll see how it uh, performs tonight. The surface temperature on the Govi though, yeah, it's pretty accurate. Just under oh, 78, yeah, so it's, it's pretty close. So anyway, let's go ahead and get it turned on here. Go ahead and power it on. We want it to be in cool, auto, and 65 degrees. So the fan mode is indeed on auto. We set it to 65. You probably heard the, the fan kicked on right away because of course it's reading 82. And so it's gonna call for the compressor here in just a little bit. Basically same as the last two nights, all the windows are shut. I'm going to leave everything sealed up and come back in the morning and, and see how things are doing. Well, folks, we're only about an hour and a half into the third phase of the experiment, and I've got to interrupt it because I've noticed a problem, and that is I've essentially introduced two variables into this third and final phase of the experiment. By relocating the temperature sensor here to the wall and changing the resistance, it's reading drastically different now here on the wall, such that, check this out right here on the Govi, it is 60.8 degrees Fahrenheit in here. It feels amazing it feels like a refrigerator in here practically and check out what the thermostat is showing there 66 degrees and so before in the first and second phase i set it to 65 because that's what felt comfortable to me i really didn't want it to be 65 degrees but when i would go out camping 65 degrees felt comfortable probably more like a, a 68 or 69 right well by relocating this now that it's reading different it's gonna be trying to get it down to probably you know 61 degrees the first time it shut off right around 62. So it seems like it's about three degrees different or so. So I'm gonna make the executive decision to increase the number here on the thermostat, the set temperature to 68 degrees. I know this is not ideal guys, I'm an amateur. Sorry about that, but I think this is going to get us better, more consistent results in this third and final phase compared to me leaving it set to 65 degrees. I think the end result's gonna be more consistent with the first and second phase there. So we'll report back in the morning and see where we're at. Well, good morning, folks. It is the next morning just after nine o'clock. And before I go in, I wanted to show you something that's different in this third and final phase of my experiment compared to all the other nights and that is I put a bucket down here to catch condensate all three nights. The first and second night this bucket was empty and I wasn't planning on showing it because there was nothing to show but tonight and it's actually still dripping right now overnight there's actually a fair amount of water in the the bucket there I mean it probably is about a, a half inch to a three-fourths of an inch of water there in the bucket. So that tells me already that overnight it's been removing humidity consistently. And, and I don't know if you can see that, but it just dripped down into the, the bucket. So that's already a good sign. Well, let's hop in here and, okay, it feels great first of all here. It feels very dry, very comfortable. Let's pull out the, uh, the Govi data here and refresh and see where we're looking at here. Okay, so, 64.8 degrees is what it's reading on the Govi. Remember I changed the setting on the thermostat here to 68 uh, just because I wanted to make sure that the data was more consistent because this is reading a little bit warmer compared to the previous location. But let's look at the overall temperature from about, we'll go from about six o'clock yesterday to present. And so you can see right there that Average temperature was 65 degrees. So, I mean, that is spot on what I was shooting for. And even the fluctuations, I mean, the low was 63.3, the high was 65.7. So basically there's a roughly a two degree swing, you know, up and down. And that's typical for, for a thermostat. But the big thing I'm noticing here is the, the gaps between the peaks and the valley indicating when the compressor came on, when it shut off, and then how much it waited before it came on again. It's a lot wider. In fact, if I go to, let me zoom in a little bit, if I go to one of the peaks here, let me zoom in even a little bit more so I can get a better reading. So that's 
showing at 58 is when the compressor turned on. And then let me go to the bottom of a valley. And then 03, so yeah, about five minutes. Significant improvement, because remember in the previous experiments, the compressor was kicking on for about two minutes, one to two minutes basically, and then shutting off. Here, I'm consistently getting five minutes of compressor runtime, and then it shuts off. Now you might be thinking that's relatively short still, but it was a very mild night, the temperature overall, and I'll show you those results later. But let's look at this humidity data too, because that tells an interesting part of the story. And uh, wow, this, this is really good. So the average humidity was 46.5% overnight. I mean, that's a very comfortable reading on the, the humidity there. The low was 43.3, the high was 48.9. And I mean, it cycled consistently really all the way up until the, the morning here. So I'm really pleased with these uh, results here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, compile the data among the three different nights and make some conclusions and then I'll go over those next. Okay, so now that all three phases of the experiment are complete, going back to the original question, did relocating the temp sensor from the plenum to the wall actually improve things for me or should have I left it as it was from the factory, right? And so what I've done is I've combined all the data, the temperature, the humidity data from all three phases, all three nights into a single chart. And so what you're looking at We'll do the temperature first. You're looking at all three phases, all three nights combined together there. You've got blue is the fan on. That's the first phase where the fan was running continuously the entire night. Then for red, you've got fan auto. That was phase two where the fan only came on when it was calling for cooling. And then that yellow or orange after relocating, that's after I moved that temp sensor to the wall by the thermostat there. And so we're looking at the temperature across those three phases. First thing I want to point out is notice that in all three, the temperature sharply drops in the first you know, 30 minutes, the first hour. And that just shows us that the air conditioner is working properly. It's outputting cool air. But let's take a look at the fan on that blue first. And I just want you to notice first the average temperature. If we were to look across the entire night, kind of where it maintained the temperature in the RV. Remember, I had it set to 65 on the thermostat, but you'll notice it kind of averages here more about 67, 68 degrees. So, I mean, it was actually warmer than what I had it set to. And then also notice, I know this is zoomed out far, but there's lots of spikes up and down, up and down on the temperature. And basically that correlates to when the compressor was turning on and off and so we find with the fan on that basically it was short cycling it would come on for a minute or two the compressor start cooling and then it would shut off because that temperature sensor in the plenum would say hey i've already gotten to the set temperature and so there was lots of on off on off throughout the night but let's look at the fan auto the phase number two so with this one you can see the temperature is quite a bit higher again i had it set to 65 on the thermostat notice it kind of starts out right about 70 and then over the course of the night, it slowly drops down and, and gets closer to that set temperature of 65 degrees. But I mean, for most of the night, it was a very high, uncomfortable, you know, 70 to 71 degrees there. I do notice that the ridges on the temperature fluctuations are, are further apart there on the fan auto. And so the compressor basically wasn't turning on as frequently, but when I zoom into the, the raw data, it still was only coming on for a short, sometimes a minute and a half, two minutes, maybe three minutes tops. But let's go down to the, the orange or the yellow there after relocating the temp sensor. And first off, let me just point out that that first big dip, you know, right after six o'clock there, that was when I made the executive decision to change the set temperature, which my goal was to have it set to 65 across all three phases. But when I relocated the temp sensor to the thermostat, to the wall, basically I changed the resistance there. And so it started registering a warmer temperature in the RV than what it was in reality. And so if I left it set to 65 degrees after relocating, it really would have been doing 62 degrees. And so I made the executive decision to increase the set temperature on that final phase in hopes of not creating another variable. And you'll see it actually averaged out over the course of the night to about 65 degrees. And so I think that was the right thing to do. 
But the biggest thing that I notice with that, you know, after relocating there is that they, the ridges in the valleys are much further apart. And you can see there, they're kind of clustered between a, a low of 63 and a high of 65. So we've got a nice two you know, degree differential, but then they're much further apart. And when I zoom into this data, it shows me that the compressor on average was turning on for about five minutes at least, if not more before shutting off. And so that gave the system the opportunity to remove more humidity. So let me scroll down to the humidity next, because I think this really reveals a lot with what was going on. So again, blue is the fan on, and you'll notice just lots of, you know, swinging up and down, up and down, and just notice how high that humidity is on the blue there. I mean, it just shoots up. It, they, they all start about, you know, 50%, but then that blue with the fan on, it shoots all the way up to almost 65% humidity. And it just hangs out there pretty much the whole night, kind of levels off eventually when the compressor is no longer called for, and it just hangs out at about 60% humidity. Guys, that is very uncomfortable, not very pleasant down here in the south. And so really that just shows us that when you leave the fan on continuously and it's just running, 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 even when the compressor's not, it just introduces excess humidity into your, your RV and it makes it feel uncomfortable. Let's look at the red though. This is where the fan was on auto mode. The temp sensor was still in the plenum, the original location. And you can see right away, just much lower humidity off the bat there. It is tighter together with the, the peaks there. And that's because again, the compressor wasn't running long enough to really drastically remove humidity. In fact, you see over the course of the entire night, the humidity kind of gradually creeps up. And then of course, after midnight, when it no longer called for the compressor, it just kind of followed the, the trend uh, of outside. And I'll show you that here in just a minute. But then let's take a look at the gold. After relocating the temp sensor to the wall, let's look at the humidity there because this is what really impresses me with the new location of the temperature sensor. First off, notice that with the gold there, the humidity is the lowest out of all the three nights right there. I mean, it's averaging a real healthy, let's just say 46% or so on average, and it's consistent too, all the way across the entire night. I mean, it is staying right in that comfortable range. I mean, I figure anything between, you know, 40 to 47% feels fairly comfortable in condition space. And so, I mean, it is right in that zone there. But then also notice that the, the gaps between the, the valleys and the peaks, they're spread apart further and they get further and further apart as the night goes on, of course, because the temperature outside was getting lower and lower and so it was calling for less cooling. But that indicates that the compressor was running longer and so it was able to remove more of that moisture and keep it out of the RV, making it feel more comfortable. And I mean, just compare that to the, the fan on in the blue. I mean, it was just up and down and they're so tight together with the valleys and peaks that it was on and off, on and off. And so that the gold, you know, after relocating the, the temp sensor, it really shows that the air conditioner was performing like a champ. I mean, this is a, a very good looking, graph for humidity, a very comfortable looking graph. And so I think in the end, we can conclude that first off, running the fan continuously, it has been proven many times in residential applications, but it's going to introduce excess humidity in your RV and make it feel very uncomfortable. So that's one thing I think we have to, to acknowledge. But then secondly, if we leave the temperature sensor in the plenum there, turn it on fan auto, we're gonna get some very inaccurate uh, temp readings. I mean, as you can see in the data that I collected, it was all over the place. It kind of gradually went down, but it was reading a lot warmer than, than what I set it to. And so that really didn't work out so well. But as soon as I relocated the temp sensor to the wall and it was actually recording what the room was as opposed to what the plenum was, the temperature was consistent. It was significantly lower. Now, part of that was because I changed the resistance in the line, the, the sensitivity of that temp sensor. But then again, if we go to the humidity, I mean, we can see it just performed like a champ in the gold there after relocating that, that temp sensor. 
And so, you know, I think for me, it really was ideal for me to relocate that temp sensor, other than the downside of it reading warmer on the temp sensor than it really is. You know, I'd rather have it that way where it's reading warmer than it really is so that when you set it, it ends up cooler than it really is, if that makes sense. But that's really the only downside that I can think of. It, it just gave the system, the compressor, the chance to run longer and pull more humidity out of the air. I mean, basically if it's short cycling on and off, on and off, there's just not enough time for the, the coil, the condenser or anything to work properly and, and pull off that, that moisture. And so in my case, it was a complete success to relocate that temp sensor. I'm very pleased with the results that I'm seeing here. Now in full transparency, for those who are curious what the outside temperature and humidity looked like over the course of those three nights, remember, I can't control that, but I did try to pick three nights consecutive that they were pretty similar. So I did track that with a separate sensor outside the RV. And I'll pull up that data real quick here so you can see. So now we're looking at a chart showing outside the RV. This is temperature again, same colors representing each of the three nights. And you can see temperature wise, they all started about the same place and they all started trending downward roughly at about the same rate. On that last night, after I relocated the, the temp sensor in the gold there, you can see that it was a little bit warmer that night. And so being warmer, that's going to make it call for more cooling in the RV essentially and run the compressor more, run the cooling more. And so to be fair, I think on that last night after I relocated the sensor, it ran longer. We saw that and that could be partly due to the air being a little bit warmer outside. But Again, if we look at the start of the experiment, you know, about five o'clock each night, all the way up until really about two or three o'clock, they were all tracking, you know, fairly consistently. And then if we look at the humidity as well, you can see same thing. They're very similar initially, you know, five o'clock, but then right at about one, two o'clock in the morning on that last night, the humidity was a little bit lower. So again, to be fair, that could have played into the results that I was getting on the inside of the RV. Uh, you know, impacting that a little bit, but I still think the data is, is helpful. So in my case, I do believe that moving the temperature sensor to the wall, to the thermostat was the right thing to do. But that brings us back to one of the original questions. Why would Furion design it that way? Why would they put the temperature sensor in the plenum? And I know there's a lot of hate, a lot of negative chatter online about this people accusing furion of being just incompetent you know just pushing a product out to the market without testing it and for me i find that very hard to believe for such a large company i'm sure they have very talented employees very talented engineers and designers that created and designed this this furion ac and like i said earlier in the video i really like the way it's designed especially up in the plenum box with the foam insert where everything is real tightly sealed up there but still why did they put the temperature sensor in the plenum why did they design it that way and i've got a couple ideas these are all speculation by the way but one idea is that maybe Furion was designing the air conditioner for use in a drier climate, you know, such as Arizona. I think that's where their headquarters are located. And maybe they were thinking of the air conditioner being used in a drier climate where you don't have to worry about humidity as much. And so then keeping the fan on running continuously, you know, circulating the air, that's certainly a good idea. It really wouldn't be a big deal because the climate is drier, right? So that's one idea I had. But the, the second idea is, you know, sometimes in RVs, depending on the floor plan, depending on the layout, you have to be really careful where you position the thermostat, you know, so when an RV manufacturer designs a floor plan and then they put the thermostat on a wall or on a cabinet, they have to be really careful that the thermostat, if that's where the temp sensor is, they have to be careful that it's not near a, a window where the sun would come in and heat up that thermostat abnormally or, you know, somewhere else where the air really isn't going to be measuring accurately at that thermostat location. And so by Furion removing the temp sensor from the thermostat and putting it in the plenum, it, it solves that problem, at least from a, a manufacturer standpoint. Then they can put the thermostat on the wall wherever they want, and they don't have to worry about getting inaccurate temperature readings because of the sun coming through a window and hitting it, right? I mean, I remember my last RV, if I parked it just right at a campsite, there was a window where the sun could come through and hit that thermostat for, you know, an hour or two of the day and it would heat up the, the thermostat and give 
abnormal temperature readings, right? And so it's just an example where maybe Furion was trying to solve that problem by putting the temperature sensor in the, the plenum. Again, I just want to emphasize this is all speculation, but those are two possible reasons for why Furion designed it that way. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm using the product in a way that perhaps they just didn't anticipate given the humidity that's in my climate. And so that's why the OEM design seemed inferior in my case and of course others that have had the, the same problem. So in closing, I created this video hopefully to be a, a helpful resource to the RV community, but also to give feedback to Furion because like I said, I really do like the Furion AC. I like the way it's designed. It cools down very quickly. There's just one thing that I would change, and that is, of course, the location of the, the temp sensor. I really think it should go on the wall with the, the thermostat. But at least now I've got data that backs up what I was feeling and shows the difference between the different uh, positions there and the different settings on the thermostat. And, you know, I was thinking maybe in a future version of the product, Furion could take the new thermostat that I've got that has the temperature sensor in it that's only used for the furnace right now, Maybe Furion could, I don't know if it's a software update or an update to the circuit board, but they could take that temperature sensor on the thermostat and use it to determine temperature for the air conditioner. Or maybe they could even give the user the option to choose through a dip switch, whether it reads the temperature off the thermostat or off the plenum, depending on the, the climate you're in, right? Or maybe there's an average it takes between the two or uses both somehow. Well, folks, I hope this video was helpful to everyone watching out there. I'd love to hear from you, so definitely drop me a comment below or maybe even leave some feedback to, to Furion below. Eventually, I think they will read through all the comments on this video. And they seem to be the kind of company that wants to improve their products. And so that will, of course, benefit all of us as RVers. Just make sure your feedback is constructive and respectful. As always, thanks for watching.